Hello there and welcome to the series of videos that's going through perpendicular lines this time. Here we're on exercise 5f in A-level maths. So perpendicular lines are at a right angle to each other and if you know the gradient of one then you can find the gradient of another. So for example in this sketch here we have two lines that are at a right angle to each other. The, line of the, the gradient of the red line goes one across and two up. And if we look at the gradient of the blue line, we can clearly see here that if we go two across, we go one down. And that effectively means that if we were to go one across, we'd go a half down. And as we're going down, we would say that the gradient here is minus a half. So you can see the link here between our original gradient and our uh, new gradient. We need to make it negative because if one graph has a positive uh, positive gradient, the other one has to be going downhill, so you have to effectively change the sign of your original gradient, and then it's 1 over your old gradient. So if this was a 3, it'd be minus 1 over 3 here. So in this way we can generally write the perpendicular gradient as minus 1 over m. Some people would refer to it as the negative reciprocal reciprocal meaning 1 over, and it's negative because one graph has to be of a positive gradient and one graph will have to be at a negative gradient if they are to meet at a right angle. What we could also say is that these two lines here will multiply together to make minus 1. So the two gradients that are parallel to each other must times to make minus 1. Okay, so either way that you prefer to remember it, you may refer to, you may like to remember it as minus one over the gradient, or you might like to refer to it as uh, the two values that will times together to make minus one. So we can check here, are the two gradients here parallel? Well, first of all, they're written in a bit of an ugly form. So what I think I'll do is change these into y equals mx plus c first. So in this case here, adding the y onto the other side will get us a gradient of three. And in this case here, subtracting them and dividing through by 3, we get a gradient of negative a third. Does this match our rule? Can you times them to make minus 1? Yes, they are perpendicular. They do meet at a right angle. Are these lines perpendicular? So the first line, that's pretty easy. That's going to have a gradient of a half. We'll need to do a little bit of rearranging for the second one, though. And this gives us a gradient of 2. Will these two gradients multiply to make minus 1? No, they'll multiply to make 1. Is, uh, and another way of testing it is, is one gradient minus 1 over the other gradient? No, because they're both positive and they should both be negative. If you were to effectively sketch this out, you'll have one graph that has a gradient of a half and one gradient that has a gradient of 2. And you can clearly see here that those two lines don't meet at a right angle. One needs to be positive, one needs to be negative. Okay, so here is the question um, that we're going to do next. Uh, a line is perpendicular to the line 2y minus x minus 8 equals 0 and passes through the coordinate 5 minus 7. Find the equation of the line. Well, first of all, what I'll do is I'll find uh, the gradient of this line, then I'll do the little trick to get the perpendicular gradient, and then I'll work with a coordinate to help me find the equation of the line. So, first of all, I'll have to rearrange this to work out the gradient of this line. And in this case here, the gradient is a half. The next thing I need to do then is work out the gradient of the perpendicular. So either I can think, well, what number will times together by a half to make minus 1? I could think that that number is minus 2. Or I could use my negative 1 over m rule, minus 1 over a half. And you can remember that dividing by a half is the same as timesing by 2. So I can treat this as minus 2. So given that I know my gradient and I know a coordinate that intersects um, the line, then I can just use x as the value 5 
and y as the value 7. So using y equals mx plus c, substitute these values in, work out what c needs to be, and rewrite out our equation again to y equals minus 2x plus 3. So this line here is going to be perpendicular to this line here, and it's going to intersect at, the line is going to pass through 5 minus 7. It won't necessarily intersect the, the other line at 5 minus 7. Right, okay, your turn then. Pause the video and have a go at this question. Right, okay, well done for pausing the video and having a go at this question here. So a line is perpendicular to y equals 6x minus 9 and passes through the coordinate 0, 1. Find the equation of the line. So, first of all, what I need to do is I need to find some number that will times together by 6 to make minus 1. And in this case here, m is going to be minus a sixth. Or it can be negative 1 over 6, which is exactly what I've got here. The next thing I need to do is substitute my values into y equals mx plus c. So I know here that m is minus a sixth. x, y is going to be the coordinate of 0, 1. So plugging these in, I get 1 equals minus a sixth times 0 plus c. This is just 0, so c equals 1. So my final answer here is going to be a minus a sixth x plus 1. And that kind of makes sense because 0, 1 is going to be the uh, y-axis intercept. And I know it has a gradient of negative a sixth, so it's going to be a flat straight line that's decreasing at a rate of 1 over 6 for every 1 we go across to the right. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Have a go at exercise uh, 5F now. Persevere through those difficult questions, don't you? And uh, ask your teacher for help if you need any. Thanks for watching.